Okay, back at it. I'm going after the front body mount bolt on the driver's side. I was trying to get this up underneath it. It's difficult to get in there uh, to hold the top nut, or top bolt and that's on the bottom. I'm gonna try, sometimes you get lucky, I'm gonna try to get it off with just the impact wrench. I think that three quarters is the right size. It's five eighths on the top. I'll just see what we. Seemed like it fit whenever I tried it before. We'll see if a smaller one's the right size. That's an 11 sixteenths. Sure, it's just spinning at the top. I have to figure out a way to get a wrench or something up there to hold it. Yep, it's spinning. I'm gonna shut the camera off while I figure out how to do that. Okay, I've got a three eighths inch ratchet up there with a five eighths inch socket on it. We're gonna try it now. Yep, that's not working very well. So I've got a piece of 2x4 stuck up here and that's bracing against the ratchet that I had stuffed up there. And I appear to have gotten some movement. It's probably breaking but I put the breaker bar on Sometimes that's what you got to do to get it off. Broken body mount bolt. But uh, the last one I did, just the impact wrench by itself broke it. So, get the ratchet out that's up on the top. Of course, the bolt is stuck in it. But that one is at least loose now. On to the second body mount. Now, I think they're numbered one, two, three, and four on each side, but I kind of refer to them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, with the passenger side starting at five. 
But uh, I'm going to see if I can get the other side off first before I do anything with the lift. And then we'll go from there. What I did to get this bolt out of this socket was I went over to the vise and I just put this part of the bolt in the vise, changed the setting on the ratchet from tighten to loosen, I'm sorry, loosen to tighten, and very little pressure and it came off. Sometimes that doesn't work very well and you have to grip the socket in a vise, take the ratchet out and use a punch down there to knock it out. Over on the driver's side there's a vapor canister in there and it's held on with three bolts. You can see two of them, they're half inch. Uh, there's the third. So I am just going to see if I can make quick work out of them with the air ratchet. Get that canister out of my way and proceed to remove the body mount bolt. tripod in my way and the air hose in my way and the light in my way. I hope I'm getting some of this on the video. There's a nut on the back of that one. Okay, get the second one out and to put some pressure on the canister from the back to keep that nut from... and the canister is loose. Um, probably just going to cut the... You see the canister a little bit, right? Right in here. This is the canister right here. I'm just going to cut the uh, rubber hoses that hold it on to make it quicker. Actually, with the bolts removed, that canister was able to be pushed up out of the way. I didn't even cut it. Uh, this side broke off pretty easily. It took like two turns with the breaker bar. And that came out. There is one other thing on this side. There's a ground strap there. Uh, looks like it might be a three-eighths. So that has to be removed because that's going to connect the body to the frame. And as you are aware, that's what we're trying to get rid of, is any connection between the body and the frame. So that when we lift the body, we don't have anything pulling up on the frame or ripping it out. So 
so three eighths inch self tapping screw bolt on. As I always do, I'm putting it back where it belongs because this is going to be apart for a long time. I don't want to be guessing where everything goes. It takes a second or two to do it, but it actually, I think, takes less time to put it back in than to label it, tag it, and try to find a place to store it. Actually, with the bolts removed, that canister was able to be pushed up out of the way. I didn't even cut it. Uh, this side broke off pretty easily. It took like two turns with the breaker bar, and that came out. There is one other thing on this side. There's a ground strap there. Uh, looks like it might be a three-eighths. So that has to be removed because that's going to connect the body to the frame. And as you are aware, that's what we're trying to get rid of is any connection between the body and the frame. So that when we lift the body, we don't have anything pulling up on the frame or ripping it out. So, three eighths inch self tapping screw, bolt on. As I always do, I'm putting it back where it belongs because this is going to be apart for a long time. I don't want to be guessing where everything goes. It takes a second or two to do it, but it actually, I think, takes less time to put it back in than to label it, tag it, and try to find a place to store it. There was a nut behind one of those screws, the top one. I'm going to try to put it through the fender well and again I won't be looking for it. Uh, the other two, I'm sure there's a welded on nut or something on the canister and I will put those into those brackets on the canister when I take it out of there. Or if I can drop it down right now. Actually can do it right now. Can't quite see it, so I'll do it later. Okay, the next thing we have to take off in order to get the number two, and as I call
column six, two and six. Body mounts is we have to take the sill plate off. It's held on with four screws. One, two, three, four. I've already tried them. They are into the fiberglass, so there shouldn't be any problem with removing any of these. Uh, other than seeing to get my screwdriver in the slot in the Phillips screws. And if I remember correctly, once the sill plate is out, this trim panel is, is really just held in the, by the sill plate. That's why we have to take it out. So those came out nice and easy. Sill plate just lifts off. Once the sill plate is off, I'll have to examine this further to make sure I'm not trying to break something, but I thought that the panel here just came out. I will have to take a better look at it. So you can kind of see I've gotten the trim plate a little bit away from the panel. So it's just going out and down. Seems like it ought to be coming out, but it isn't. I looked at the other side. I can't see any screws from here. I'll turn the camera back on when I get it figured out. Okay, that is the trim panel I'm trying to take out right near the emergency or parking brake release. And I did find another screw way back up under here. There appears to be one screw head holding it in. screwdriver in it. Now I'm going to have to put the camera down to get two hands on the screwdriver so that I can turn the darn thing. But that's where it is. Back in the back there right near the uh, headlight dimmer switch. So there's the panel. Uh, at first I thought there was a second hole with the screw missing but I find that there on the hole that you're supposed to use I don't know if I can get it on the camera but it's beveled so that the beveled head of the screw sinks down in it and becomes flush but as you can see that's a quite a long screw so it takes a bit of turning to get it out so I have the second body mount bolt broken loose. Uh, wasn't too hard to break loose. I've got a 3 8 ratchet that I've I used and I was able to do it without a breaker bar or anything like that. It's a pretty short ratchet so not much leverage there. So if you haven't been following along this whole series what I'm doing now is the technique I use when you have a rusty bolt what happens is as you loosen it the rust in that builds up inside the threads and if you tighten it starts to get tighter and if you continue to force it once it gets tight 
it tends to rust weld the bolt to the nut and then you have a heck of a time getting it off so what I'm doing is I'm loosening it some so it starts to get tight then I'm tightening it back up to allow the debris to get out of the threads and then I loosen it some more and I go back and forth like that until it comes out so that's what I'm doing it's a little time consuming so I'm gonna shut off the video and have at it well there's the bolt it took a long time to get out I had to do a lot of back and forth but bottom line is it's out uh, I'm going to put it back in actually because I have a grandson that's coming over who's almost 10. He's going to help me take the car off of the, the body off of the frame. So now that I know this will come out, I'll just put it back in, hand him the air ratchet, and let him have some fun. So in order to get to the number three and four mounts, which are behind a panel here, and up here, it's much easier to take the rear wheel off if, uh, to get it out of the way. So there's the access panel. Have to go get some tools to take that off. That little panel is held on with four five sixteenths head nuts. Shouldn't be much of an effort to take them off. A little extension is useful to get you out to where you can get a swing on the on the ratchet. And once we get inside there, we'll have the uh, have brought the screwdriver type thing for this. Once you get them broken loose, which isn't much, I, I probably could have done them. But once you get the uh, nut broken loose, the screwdriver is definitely going to be easier to use than a ratchet. Let's get your screwdriver handle for your quarter inch socket. See, this would have been quicker if I'd have done that. with gloves and everything. Now that little panel is kind of put on there with some sealant behind it or undercoating or something so you need a little something to be able to get behind there and pry it off. And if I pick up the whole tripod and get a look in there for you, show you what you're dealing with. 
There's the top bolt. Again, that should be a 5 eighths, just like the others were. And hopefully, since it's kind of enclosed, that will come out of there easily. I'm going to try it first. Ratchet, no extension or no leverage or breaker bar or anything like that. Okay, it's going to be stubborn on me. We'll go to the half inch. doesn't work. Breaker bar for some leverage. Okay, that worked. So it's not on there too terribly tight. A younger me would have gotten it off with the three eighths, but I'm not a younger me anymore. So I did feel that tightening. Loosen again. Unfortunately, you can't get much of a swing on this. So, this is probably going to take me quite a while. So, no sense in having you watch me struggle with that. I'll be back when it's out. So, I'm back of the rear wheel here. There's the final fourth mount on the driver's side. So I'm going to put a wrench on that, see how it goes. Again, it's a 5 eighths. Either I'm getting tired or that's pretty tight. Let's go with that. Breaker bar. It is a bad angle. I'm tempted to just put the impact wrench on it and give it a go. But I don't know. I don't want to break it. And the impact wrench actually didn't break it loose in the number ones. Mm. Well, let's give it a quick shot with the impact wrench and see what happens.
appears to be turning, but not loosening. So there's the rear body mount that's spinning in its socket. I'm going to have to grind the head of that off so that I can get it out. I still have the two, number three and seven body mounts to finish in front of the rear wheels, but it's gearing up to rain here and I want to get this ground out before the rain comes because I need uh, electricity to do it. I'm going to go put my Kevlar sleeves on those uh, sparks burn a little bit. You might have noticed that I'm hitting that in relatively short bursts. I don't want to heat up the inside of the fender and possibly blister the paint on the fender. So that's why I'm doing that. So I'll continue to do that until I get that head ground off. Okay, it looks like I've got the head of that bolt off. I'm going to try a chisel between it and the rubber mount, the metal and the rubber, if I can knock that off. smoking from the heat. Uh, I can't tell that the washer is separated from the bolt. There may be a pushing inside there. Anyways, I'll get something a little neck thinner like a screwdriver and try and pry that out. So I went at it with a screwdriver and really touched it and it came out. So what's left in there is the upper mount. And when I lower the chassis from the from the car, that'll come out. They do sell replacement mount boxes here. I can tell that one's pretty rusted, so I'll end up replacing it, which probably means I'll have to grind these rivets off and two more on the inside whenever the body's off of the frame. So, that leaves me with just the uh, body mount bolts that are in front of the rear tires. 
and those are going to require a lot of time for me to basically uh, loosen them as far as I can and then tighten them back up to clear the cred from the uh, threads and loosen them again and that's going to be a long process but uh, all it is at this point is time so I'm going to end this video um, unless I come up with something else that is a discovery or a better technique or something of that nature and uh, that's it for today uh, tomorrow my grandson is coming and we're gonna try and lift the body is or lift the I should say lower the frame from underneath the body because the way I do it I hang it up on the rafters um, and we're going to try to get that done tomorrow while he's here. Well, I got the number three and number seven body mounts bolts out after just loosening them until they started to tighten up and then tighten them back in. The passenger side was a little easier than the driver's side. Um, so, since it's earlier than I thought it would be when I finished, I am going to take and grind these rivets. There's four of them here that I can get to easily uh, with the grinder on that body mount. Or actually, it's a body mount reinforcement. So there's two rivets here, two rivets here. I'm going to take those off if I can reach them. I don't know if I can reach that one back there. I might have to wait until the body comes off. probably get some of this one. Don't mind if I grind that. Uh -oh reinforcement down a little bit, but I didn't want to hit the frame there. Uh, and it just cleaned it up. It'd be less rust I have to take off. So those are off as good as I can get them with the body in position that it's in. I don't make it easier whenever it comes time to replace it. These two are ground pretty much flush. I can probably get a screwdriver behind that. That one needs a little bit more, but I didn't want to hit the frame anymore. And once the body's off, I'll be able to get under there and hit the back two. Or the two that are on the inside near the frame. They are up here. 
There's no way to get them now. Uh, I suppose if I was trying to do this without removing the body uh, and I needed to replace that mount, I could probably, well, maybe I could get a long drill bit up there. Uh, maybe not. I think this would be in the way, but uh, we'll get it once the body's off. <laughs>